Hi guys, so it's day four. Um, we've just finished um, photographing and working with uh, Bitsis Gabonica and um, we've been walking around the forest a little bit and lo and behold we have found Bitsis Nysocosis which is your rhino viper, river jack or my favorite name, um, the butterfly viper. Now I'll explain a little bit later why the butterfly viper is, is so relevant as a name but uh, I'll quickly show you where the snake is actually chilling. Relaxing in the leaf litter Right here, it's amazing. Let me grab it here quickly. Cool, so let's get her out of here. Hello, my God. wow, she is absolutely stunning. Look at that snake. Bitis nasocornis, which is the family of the puff adder and the gaboon adder, which all three occur here in Uganda. It's a very diverse group of, of vipers across Africa. Uh, you have small southern adders down in Cape Town to your really big chunky adders in Central and West Africa. This is the only species of the Bitis uh, narsicornis. There's no subspecies of this. They're very closely related, like I said, to the puff adder and the gaboon adder. The gaboon and the rhino are much more docile than uh, your puff adder. Uh, it's extremely rare to actually get a bite from these guys or even trigger a strike response, whereas the puff adder will hiss and puff as much as it possibly can to make itself aware. Now, I heard, read something interesting recently that these snakes or this viper is actually known to create and produce the loudest hiss of any African viper. Um, so it's very unique in letting you know, you know, you're walking through the jungle and you're coming a little bit too close and it recognizes you're coming by because of the vibrations of your footsteps. The snake will actually start to hiss and puff, literally to tell you, listen, I'm here, move away. I'm not gonna move. They're very slow, reticular movement snakes, meaning they use the underbellies and the scales to pull themselves along and pull themselves forward as opposed to the serpentine movement of most snakes. Coming back to the naming, or the common name, being the river jack or the butterfly viper. The cousin species, uh, your gaboon adder, which you have western and eastern of, they recently got separated. And the one is Bitis um, gabonica, and the other one is Bitis rhinoceros. Meaning, now you can understand why the Latin name kind of overlaps with this common name of rhino viper. So they've actually gone now with um, butterfly viper, which I think is far more appropriate considering how beautiful this snake is. And it will literally float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Uh, a little bit more than a bee though. So these snakes, they're the smaller ones out of the puff adders and um, your gaboon adders. They only get to about between 40 to 78 centimeters with extremely large specimen found uh, many years ago that reached about 1.2 but due to exploitation for the pet trade for skins and just natural habitat loss I'm sure the big giants have long left us so this is already a really nice sized rhino viper she's around probably between two to three kilos um, and these guys are in terms of habitat I'm literally in it right now so onto one of the other common names which is a uh, river jack this is actually where we've been looking mostly for the snake is along slow moving streams and rivers and they will sit there just adjacent to the water they like humid moist environments so she will very much enjoy just like i said the river jack they sit in shallow pools and puddles um, enjoying the water and then will move just up the embankment to sun themselves and wait for something to eat and these guys are full ambush predators they will sit and wait along footpaths of small mice rats or depending on the size of the animals Along the river, they've been known to even eat fish and frogs at a younger age, depending on what prey items are available. The venom of these snakes is very, very serious bite. You do not want to take a bite from one of these guys. They, they've got the smallest fangs out of the, the three, the puff adder and the gaboon adder, only at about 1.5 centimeters. It's a primarily hemotoxic venom, meaning um, you will hemorrhage, uh, start bleeding all over the body, and it also has um, small amounts of cytotoxin so not a snake to want to get bit by 
and um, really something to respect. But if you do manage and luck, are lucky enough to see one of these in the wild, you really marvel at its color. You, you can't see it on camera. In person, it's just a completely different snake. What I'm feeling on my, on my hands here is all these snakes are actually, they're keeled snakes. So their, their scales are very rough. They've got a little tiny keel on every single scale, which helps them a lot um, with the environment that they live in. They live in red sandy places or browner sandy places. And because of the moisture, even slight funguses and mosses will grow on their skin and they'll actually darken to the color of the ground. So she's just freshly shed. You can see the fresh oils and she's brand new. I mean, she's, she's just bought a new suit pretty much. But at the end of their shedding process, she will be completely dull and pretty much the color of the surrounding bush. You would think that um, this wouldn't be very camouflage considering it's super bright colors, but it's quite the opposite. In the dappled shade of the jungle where you have some lighter spots and some darker spots, these guys under one or two leaves will literally disappear before your eyes. It's a really, really amazing snake. Unlike many adders, which are completely terrestrial, just like your gaboon and your puff adder. By the way, I have made a video as well for um, the gaboon adder and the puff adder. Check the link above here, um, follow the link and you can see those videos as well. Um, but these snakes are very unique in the sense of um, kind of terrestrial adders that yeah. they not arboreal, but you could call them semi-arboreal. They, uh, they won't shy away from climbing up into the lowland shrub, uh, two to three meters up um, off the ground. And this is also helped by a slightly prehensile tail, which you can see she's doing right now. She's actually hooking, and now you can see she kind of maybe wants to come towards me. But this prehensile tail is very rare amongst adders, and is a very, very interesting fact. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same with the puff adder, but a very cool fact that I learned about the puff adder is that they're actually scentless creatures. They emit a counteracting kind of, call it an ointment or an oil that masks their scent. So they can sit along uh, rodent paths or any sort of hunting area and the animals actually can't smell them. So that's the case with a puff adder, but I'm assuming due to the genetic similarity that this guy could potentially have the same adaptation. So now, guys, as beautiful as they are, and, and I know the pet and exotic trade is massive these days, it is very important that if you ever consider buying an exotic animal, to make sure that it's not wild caught. There are plenty of captive populations available throughout Europe and America. Organize an import permit, do it the right way. These snakes that are caught in the wild, they really don't do well. Uh, they're often loaded with parasites, and chances are it's probably one out of 20 or 30 or a shipment of a hundred of these maybe one or two will survive and then after the first two months you've bought them guess what it dies because of parasites or due to not enjoying captivity they're not they're not designed for captivity as as opposed to the captive populations first and second generation f1 and f2 which have actually been bred and it's like buying it's like buying a wolf you wouldn't buy a wolf but you'd buy a german shepherd it's the same situation you know so please make calculated and educated decisions. These guys are much happier in the forest, as you can see. She's being an absolute darling and really not, I mean, I'm pretty much free handling one of the most venomous snakes in Africa. And look at how relaxed she is. She's absolutely stunning. I mean, let's go a little bit closer here to the camera and show the boys and girls how stunning the snake is. It is really, really, really beautiful. On that note, let's put her down here. This is definitely not to be done at home. Um, I've been doing this for many years. I've been doing this for over 10, 15 years of my life. I've done advanced snake handling courses, etc. I've done many herping trips. So it's understanding the snake, reading the snake. You can see she's very relaxed. Um, there's moments where it won't happen. And each snake and each individual snake, not even from species to species, can vary in temperament. 
So if you like this video, guys, I've been working with uh, At Living Zoology um, from Czech Republic. They're doing amazing work with snakes and reptiles and amphibians. So please do give them a follow. If you like this video, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It would be much appreciated. And do stick around and tune in for the next episode, which will be the next snake we catch on this expedition Uganda. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.